What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to NBA Everyday. If you missed yesterday's episode, which you probably did, it was about the Sacramento Kings and it was a 10 out of 10, which means that nobody watched it. I kind of knew what I was getting myself into making an entire video about the Sacramento Kings, but I'm doing the exact same thing for all 30 NBA teams, and this is day number two, and we're talking about the Warriors. I just felt like if I'm going to talk about a team that have a little bit of relevancy, I should back it up by talking about a team with a lot of a lot of relevancy because they have like Steph Curry, Steph, Clay Thompson's coming back from an injury, ah, uh, draft picks, Jonathan Kaminga, all of those things. Leave a like, subscribe, use the hashtag NBA every day on Twitter and stuff. If you have questions you want me to answer, let's just be engaged or in the comment section. That works too. All right. Before we even talk about the Warriors, can we address this Jonathan Kaminga thing? Because it has got out of hand. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, um, every year we do a, a live stream of the NBA draft, the NBA lottery, and Jonathan Kam Kaminga was drafted, and I made a joke. It was half joke, half like low key kind of serious, and it went too far. I'm not even gonna repeat what it was because I wanted to die. I know it won't die because it's, it's Twitter and nothing nothing dies on Twitter. But I don't want credit for coming up with that nickname because it was unintentional. It's, I didn't want to do that. I didn't think it would go as far as it did. All right, so Jonathan, if you're watching this video, to me, for your the entirety of your career, I will call you Jonathan Kaminga and nothing else. Unless you get like a real nickname, you will always be Jonathan Kaminga to me, not what I said a couple weeks ago, okay? Okay, now to the actual Warriors, because last season was definitely an up and down year. Starting off, I hope y'all remember, Steph Curry had a couple, I would say, dud Steph Curry type games in the beginning of the season, and people were all over the place, and I told y'all, if he ain't got KD, if he ain't got Klay Thompson, Steph Curry is just a shooter. He shut all of that up, <laughs> like, like that. Um, it's kind of crazy what people would say. And not really use their eyes and use like a resume. I, I, I don't really know. But he shut all that up. And the Warrior season itself was also a lot of ups and downs. The, the, one of the few bright spots is the fact that, that Draymond Green showcased, oh, that year last year was not what Draymond Green really is. And he still shows that he can be one of the best defensive players in the league. I think he officially ended a third in defensive player of the year. And he still has an amazing impact on the offensive side of the ball. Even if he's finishing the game with two points and one for seven from the field, he can still be a positive offensive player while being an elite level defender. You even have players like Andrew Wiggins kind of change the narrative around him, at least a little bit. Uh, Wiggins has always been a guy, empty stats, does he really love the game? Can he perform at a high level? Yada, yada. And a lot of that went away because he had a lot of solid moments um, with the Warriors. Now, again, he, I would still say he's an overpaid NBA player, but he still is a quality NBA player. Then you had the emergence of Juan Toscano Anderson, and though he doesn't impact the game crazy on the box score numbers, he showcased that he belongs in the NBA, and those are like the bright things. You had the season of Kelly Oubre. Do y'all remember the first couple months of Kelly Oubre's season with the Warriors? He could not hit anything, and I remember him ending up on the Warriors. I was like, that's, that is an amazing pickup, whether he's starting or coming off the bench. Kelly Oubre's gonna be that guy for them, and he didn't, and hopefully that changes when he gets to Charlotte, but not even just that. One of the biggest downsides to this season for them was James Wiseman. If you remember last offseason, there was a lot of questions revolving around the Warriors and what they would do with that pick. And what they decided was they wanted to get their cake and eat it too. Now, what I mean by that is they had one of the most, I don't know, valuable picks in recent history. Because I know I don't know if y'all remember when we got to that draft class, everybody says top three draft, top three draft. It's Anthony Edwards, Lamelo, Lamelo Ball, and, and James Wiseman. So they had this valuable valuable pick you had the wiggins contract and, and though clay thompson suffered a setback a lot of people expected them to use that pick to go out and get another star well i saw a lot of photoshops of bradley beal and the warriors jersey but they ultimately decided to use that pick because they wanted to put together a competent team to win a championship right now while also building a team for the future and what do we find out it ain't that easy y'all it ain't that easy. Now, nobody expected the Warriors to be a championship team, especially, again, with Klay Thompson being out. But what we found out is that James Wiseman and trying to develop him in one of the most um, one of the most advanced offenses in, of all time, trying to, trying to get him to learn those type of things on the fly while also trying to be a playoff team, was detrimental to the team. 
so detrimental that once James Wiseman went out with his injury, the Warriors start to turn up. They didn't need to teach this kid where to be on the offensive side of the ball or what to do on defense. They turned up after that. And I don't want anybody to misunderstand me. I'm not saying that James Wiseman can't be an elite level player or he won't be great with the Warriors in the near future. I'm just saying for this upcoming season, they struggled with showing him the ropes and getting him to be an impactful player. And now we come around to this offseason where similar things are happening. No, they don't have one of the top three picks in this year's draft, but they have two lottery picks. They have a superstar player in, in Steph Curry who's 33 years old and just showcased, oh, I can still be an MVP caliber player. We just mentioned that Draymond Green can still be amazing. And he just went to, to um, Tokyo and won a gold, so we know he still plays in high level. And Klay Thompson is coming back. The big three, the one that won them a championship before KD got there, will all be back. And I'm not saying they're all going to be to the fullest extent because once upon a time, Draymond Green can hit a jump shot. And Klay Thompson... They don't even think he's going to be ready for the season opener. And when he does come back, as much as I want to say Klay Thompson is going to be at his 100%, he's going to be an all-star caliber player immediately. I don't think that's the case when you think about him suffering two major knee slash leg injuries in the span of a year. So they have these two lottery picks and similar things happen. Everybody photoshopping. Oh, snap. Um, Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons is on the trade block. How will Ben Simmons and Draymond Green work together? Mm, can they make it work? We'll find out. Maybe we should do that trade. Oh, Bradley Beal may not be happy with the situation. We got lottery picks. We got Wiggins' contract. We got James Wiseman, who we low-key not in love with anymore, but we can try to convince some other teams to take. We're probably going to make a trade, right? We're probably going to try to get another star to come in to help this aging Warriors team level up to another championship before it is too late and what did they decide to do they decided to draft jonathan kaminga and moses moody and i don't again i don't want you to misinterpret saying that i think that these two players are not going to be impactful or a good place for the future but this goes back to what i'm saying they're trying to have their cake and eat it too they're trying to put together a championship level team in the present when they have an all-time great point guard and more on their team while also trying to develop young talent for the next stage and in the grand scheme of the NBA, this hasn't worked often. When you think about teams that have won championships, especially in the recent future or the recent um, recent years, we have the Milwaukee Bucks who traded a ton of picks to get that last piece for Drew Holiday. We have the LA Lakers who traded all of their picks and their young assets to get Anthony Davis. We got the Toronto Raptors who uh, low-key, I guess, was kind of a finesse. They traded DeMar DeRozan in one young piece, and I think one more extra pick or something. Low-key kind of finesse of a trade. When you think about it, shout-out to uh, Masai. And then you got yourself when you won those other championships, but that wasn't like, you didn't have any young players on the team, really. Um, it was like, hey, we played free agency and cap ridiculously well. Remember when uh, Steph Curry took an extension when he was still on a bum ankle, which means that we had a lot of cap space when cap space opened up and we got Kevin Durant, so we giving that a little X. That don't really fit into what I'm trying to explain right now. The Heat. Traded everything for the championships to bring in the big three. The Mavericks wasn't didn't have the young players either. They made moves to try to get get better now and gave up pieces and they blew the team up after winning the championship. It's just it's just kind of, it's it's kind of weird. The only team I can look at in recent history that low key kind of did this to some extent was the Spurs. You had an aging Tim Duncan, an aging Tony Parker, and Manu Ginobili who were still good players. You can say the same thing about Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Drew, um, uh, uh, Draymond Green, all going to be still really good players, but they also had the boy and Kawhi Leonard to come in and be the guy that's going to keep it together right now, but also supposed to be the guy for the future. Now, unfortunately for the Spurs, um, Kawhi Leonard suffered a, a quad injury that derailed his entire career with the San Antonio Spurs. But that was the only thing I could think about where an aging team had a young player that was going to be the bridge between the now and the future. Because at the end of the day, the only thing that matters for the Warriors, for Steph Curry, for Draymond, and for Klay Thompson is winning another championship. I know I saw the reports of Draymond Green texting the general manager saying when their pick was up, he wanted Kaminga on the team. Respect that. I understand. Kaminga's a, a bucket. I've been watching some summer league. I understand now. But is Jonathan Kaminga this upcoming season where you're trying to win a championship or even next season where you're trying to win a championship, is he going to help you get over that hump? The answer is probably not. So what now? I saw some more reports that they're still thinking about Ben Simmons. And I'm like, what does that even look like? Because I don't think you can trade Kaminga. I don't think you can trade Moses Moody right now because they're in summer league. They didn't, they didn't ink their contracts already, right? So you'd have to do the Wiseman. You'd have to do the Wiggins. And then some picks, I guess? I don't know. And I wonder what Warriors fans think. Obviously, Warriors fans are probably on cloud now because, again, Jonathan Kaminga and Moses Moody have been looking really solid. And in summer league, 
but they also look like players that might take a couple years before if they're gonna ever be an all-star caliber player to be that all-star caliber player when the warriors in 2021 probably need one more piece to be in that upper echelon of contenders and listen i think they had a very good offseason if you can get Otto Porter to play games, Otto Porter is an amazing player to have on your team for the amount of money you pay. A vet minimum? OP, bro. Only 28 years old. It's so disappointing because when he got traded from the Washington Wizards to the Chicago Bulls, I was low-key kind of hyped um, because the previous years, he was a 40% three-point shooter, 40% three-point shooter, 40% three-point shooter. Then he got to Chicago and never was playing, and he was in the clubs. Do they got clubs where he just got signed to because of close them, close them because OP will be there. But if you can keep him healthy, that's an amazing pickup. Um, um, who else? Nemanja Bialica adds another element to the offense because you know that Draymond Green can play some small ball five and having Nemanja Bialica, Klay Thompson, and Steph Curry on the court together sounds like an offense that's going to be hitting 100 threes. And I know Nemanja is not going to average more than like 20-ish minutes a game, but in those 20 minutes, if he can still shoot at the clip that he has shot in the previous points of his career a w and now iggy is back this man wrote a whole book about him being a six man with the warriors and he's back so i do like their off season but i'm very curious to what type of conversations went on in their front office that ultimately led to them for two years in a row keeping a pick where majority of nba fans thought that they would have been wants to be buyers were they being stingy with these picks where teams asking for too much. Because I can understand them calling up the 76ers during the draft and say, hey, we want Ben Simmons and the 76ers, right? Like, we want both of the picks. We want Wiggins to make the contracts work. We want Wiseman. And we want your next four picks. Let me know what you think. Warriors fans, I always pose, I'm going to try to keep posing the question for the diehard fans about the organization I'm talking about. If your team doesn't win the championship in the next couple years, do you think as a fan of the Warriors, you'll look back on these recent draft picks and regret them? Regardless of how good these players could be in the near future, because I think they're they're going to be pretty solid in the future. If you don't win another championship with this big three of this core that you won three with already, will you regret keeping these picks? And it's another NBA Today, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, every NBA every day. I done forgot the name of my own show. Love y'all. Peace.